Hello Infiniteers! Today I'm going to start building my version of the Pirates of the Caribbean ride that you saw in the previous episode. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is place the toy box door over here at the facade for this uh, ride. And as you know I'm typically following the design for uh, for the original Disneyland as much as possible, not the newer one. And in the original Disneyland, all they had was the front of this facade. And uh, it was later on that they built the whole courtyard here in front of it, where they could put the queue for the line. And um, I chose not to do that because this was kind of how it was in the original Disneyland. And um, it also saves memory. <laughs> so it's a win-win. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need is a new toy box. So I've placed my toy box door. We're gonna create a empty toy box and we're gonna call this the Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> and it'll take me a moment to type this in. Here we go. And we'll save. And that creates the toy box and links it to this door. And again, this is in my Disneyland save file. All right, we're going to leave the rest of those set the way they are. And for the return, we're going to place a locator over here at the exit for the ride, which will be right here. And I want to make sure the little blue dot is facing out away from the ride. So it's facing that way. So this is where we come out of the ride. Oh, and we need to set our destination locator tag. Last time when we built the Haunted Mansion, we set this to three. So this is going to be number four. And there we are. That's everything we need to do in Frontierland. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and save my toy box, and then I'm gonna go through that toy box door and I'll meet you on the other side in just a moment. Okay, here we are in the new Pirates of the Caribbean toy box. Before we start, let's talk about the layout for this toy box. Here's a map of the layout for the original Pirates of the Caribbean ride at Disneyland. You'll notice there are two levels in the ride, and the upper area crosses over the lower area at a couple of points. This was going to be too complex to try to do in the toy box, and so I simplified my design and turned it into a simpler loop. I kept the loading area and the swamp, but I took out areas 5 through 12, which consists of the blue caverns, the stormy passage, the sandbar, the captain's bed, and the treasure trove. Those areas always seem to be a little extraneous to me anyway. In my version, the swamp is immediately followed by a single waterfall that emerges at the pirate ship at number 13 on the map. The fort at number 14 is immediately followed by the town, which consists of areas 15 to 23. I always thought the battle between the ship and the fort was interesting, so I chose to make that the point where the players disembark from the boat so they can participate. And rather than take a boat ride through the town in a canal, I chose to let players explore the town on foot. So as we begin building the toy box, I think the first thing we got to have is the sky changer. Because <clears throat> the placement of the lighting source is kind of going to determine which direction I build. So the sky that we're going to use is in Disney Infinity, and it's the Pirates of the Caribbean sky that we're going to use Open Sea Sky from 1.0 from the Pirates playset. All right, and note the shadow on the uh, ground there from the Sky Changer. So the moon is up over that way. So basically, this starting pad is already facing in the direction I want to be facing when we come into the ride. So let's go ahead and delete that. I'm going to set the theme on this to be the Dragon's Domain. And we're not going to keep this terrain block, but uh, 
most of the terrain we're going to put down is going to be this because it has a nice uh, rocky cliff face there on the side that I like. Alright, and then we're going to start with this piece, the small terrain block. And let's go ahead and drop a couple of these on the back corner here, like that. And then we can delete this piece. And we'll move our starting pad back over here. Doesn't really matter for right now. It's going to be changing anyway. Alright, so the player is going to start here on one of these two blocks. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Next thing we need are the water pieces. So we're going to scroll over. <laughs> I don't know which way is the fastest, so I'm just going to the left. Might have been a good idea to have some of these down ahead of time. Uh, I was just thinking of dropping that piece to have it ahead of time, but since it's right near the water pieces, don't really need to do that. Alright, so the first piece of terrain for the water we're going to put here. And again, this is the starting area, the loading area for the ride. By the way, I read somewhere recently that uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride at uh, Disneyland and Walt Disney World is going to be replaced next year with a Jake and the Neverland Pirates attraction. I don't know how true that is. I haven't seen a lot of news on that. But if it is true, that's going to be quite disappointing. Um... <laughs> I have mixed feelings about that. Well, actually, I don't. I hate it. <laughs> um, I know the Jake and the Neverland Pirates is a kids' show that launched on Disney Junior, and it's run on there and on Disney Plus, and it's pretty popular, but I cannot imagine them gutting all of the scenes in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride and replacing it with stuff from that kids' show. It's just not going to be the same. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not looking forward to that at all. There we go. That's all of the water pieces that we need for the ride. Now back here at the starting area, let's pick this piece up and put it down and we'll fill in some of this loading area. I know the Pirates of the Caribbean ride has a lot of animatronics that don't work like they used to. And um, it is an older ride, but they could update it and keep that same theme. I mean, <laughs> it's just such an iconic part of Disneyland. I can't imagine completely revamping it and removing all of the current content and changing it to a kid's ride. It's just not right. <laughs> I much prefer the original ride. And then we're going to put a row of these down on the side just because we need a little bit extra terrain on this side of the canal. Like that. Alright. And then this is going to sit on the end. We're going to take it over two little nudges. And if you do it right, it should be hanging off the end over here by one terrain cube. And it is. So that's your spacing for that. And we'll grab this. We're going to put another one out here and you see that takes us right up to the edge of the uh, water there. And then we're going to go four little nudges like that. So two terrain cubes in width. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm having some trouble with my asthma, so sorry I have to clear my throat here a few times. I'm trying to minimize doing that, but some of that I can edit out of the video, some of it I can't. All right, so for the cliff face, we're going to use this canyon wall. 
We're going to put this right on the front of each of those. And then we're going to use this short, narrow canyon wall here. We're going to put this right in here like that. Then we'll pick this piece up again and put it down. And I want to grab the terrain cube. This is going to sit out here just like that. All right, so then we pick this piece up, put it down, go back over to the right to this canyon outer curve. And this is going to sit in here just like that. And then we're going to use this wall here. <coughs> Excuse me. And place that right there like that. And put two of them out here. All right. Now we'll grab this block one more time, put it down. We're going to go grab this large flat terrain block. We're going to put this in here right on the edge of this, like that. And I'm going to change my theme now to be the dusty crop hopper runway. This will be the, the floor for the fort. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. This piece goes right up here like that. Uh, let's see. Not that one. That one. That's going to sit there like you see. And that's going to sit there like that. And actually, as I'm looking at this, no, that's correct. Yeah, this I, this piece here, <coughs> sorry, I'm getting turned around. This piece needs to be over here. And that piece needs to go <laughs> I'm still turned around. Okay. I knew there was one of these here. I don't know why I wasn't seeing it. Okay, so that's going to sit there like that. And then we're going to come over to the right. And I'm looking for the terrain ramp. That's this piece. Okay, and that's the ramp that gets you up here on the plateau to the entrance of the fort. All right, and then, oh, not that one, pick up this one, put it down. We're going to change the theme now to be the buried treasures theme. <laughs> there it goes, it updated it finally. And we're going to do five of these across, so there's three, four, five. And we're just going to fill in the floor here and all of this. Here we go. And that is the terrain that the town is going to sit on. So you have the town, you go up the ramp, the fort is here, 
And then on the back of the fort, let's go ahead and pick this piece up and put it down. We're going to grab the next size here. And we're going to lift it up one nudge. So just like that. And then I need a little bit of spacing here. A row of these. And then one more of these. And this should connect up to the water over here, which it does. And it's a little bit lower, and that's fine. So I put these filler blocks in the middle, because they're not going to be this likely to be seen. This is where the cave is going to be sitting. So that's why those are there, like that. So there's the main level for all of the terrain. So we start over here in the loading area. We come around here, through the waterfall, out into the bay over to the town and the fort, through the caves, back to the water, and back to the loading area. So that is the map for our level. Now let's go ahead and fill in some more terrain. I'm going to go ahead and set my theme back to the dragon's domain. And let's start building some additional levels of terrain here for the caverns. So pick that piece up and put it down and that gets us over here to these tunnel pieces. So the first one's going to sit right over here at the loading area. This is the exit coming into the loading area. And we're going to put another one over here. Same kind of spacing right there. We're actually going to place two of those like that. And then we're going to use some of these pieces. And what I'm looking for is this one, cave wall. So we're going to place that one there, like you see. And then the corner like that. Corner. Oops, nope, not corner. Another straight. Sorry. And a straight, it's like that, and then two corners. Now before we put in the back side of this, let's go ahead and put in the waterfall. So we're going to be kind of looking at this from the side over here. And so let's go up to the blocks drawer, basic blocks. First block we're going to want is this one. Oops. And this piece is going to sit right under here like that. And we're going to style this using the Dunbrock theme. So we have to go to the right a little ways in the styling menu. This is going to be the roof of the waterfall descent. Okay. And we need two of those. Now we have ceiling all the way down, and we have to plug the gaps, so let's do that. And it uh, doesn't really matter exactly how we do this, but the main thing is to just just plug those holes. All right, so there is the roof for the waterfall. And then we need the waterfall itself. And for that, we're going to use this long wedge block. 
I'm going to put this down here and I'm going to place this right off the end of that block like that all the way down. And we'll change the theme on this to be the water theme. I set that to be my theme so all the rest of the blocks I put down will be water. And you'll notice there's a bit of a drop here um, when you come around the corner, and that's actually okay. If you were to have this up, and let me raise this up a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Because this water is actually a little bit lower than the top of the terrain block, you can see that creates a lip here. And when the boat hits that, it causes a problem. <laughs> So having the drop here actually um, works pretty well. And it also is a little bit of a scary moment when the player goes off the end of that <laughs> and goes tumbling down. But now that we have the waterfall, we can go ahead and enclose this. So we're going to use that piece and that piece. And so that kind of creates the back of that little cave going down, which is really good. All right, while we're working with these same pieces, let's pick this one back up and put it down. Bring this back, and we're going to change the theme on this again. <laughs> if it'll register by button press. This will be the Buried Treasures theme. I'll set that to be my theme. And we need a total of four of these. Yeah. So four with this theme, and then the one with the dragons theme. And sorry for that little delay, I was just trying to make sure I had everything correct. All right, we're going to place this piece here like you see, followed by the corner, and then this piece is going to sit in here like this, and you'll notice there's that little weird uh, square corner there, but fortunately there's a piece that we can use to fill that. That's this piece. That puts a nice rounded edge on that. Okay, and then we'll pick this piece up again. Two of those followed by a corner. We're just building the little tunnel that goes back to the uh, the loading area. Okay, and then from here, two, three, four. And I think that's correct. Let me double check that. Uh, <laughs> not finding my screen grab, so let me just do this manually. I'll count this off on my little map here. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's correct. All right, so there is the start of the tunnel. It goes back over that way. And while we're right here, um, let's pick this piece up, put it down. 
By the way, how are we doing on time? Well, we're doing pretty good. I think we can finish up the bulk of the terrain here. Alright, so that's going to sit in there like that. Those are going to sit there like that. And then we go to the left and find the canyon pieces. We're going to put this like this with one little nudge to the left. So half a block over to the left like that. Okay. And then the treasure room sits in here like this. Okay. And then the stalactites cave piece will sit in here like this. We're going to put two of them in there like that. So that gives us our exit to get out of there. And you probably want to make sure <laughs> that you can actually run through this and get from here through the treasure cave around this way and out. And we can, so that's good. All right, and then we're going to pick this floor piece up one more time. Grab this small terrain block and just fill in around this. Okay, like that. One more time, let's uh, pick this piece up and put it down. Go back to the right. I'm looking for the cliff pieces. This piece sits right over there and gives us a nice opening into that place. Leave a space there for the wall, for the fort. Yeah, same thing on the other side. Okay. So there is that. That's looking pretty good. And I'm missing one little thing here. I'm missing my terrain block that sits in there. Okay, so that looks good. And how are we doing on time? <laughs> I think we're getting up to the half hour mark here. So the rest of the terrain that we need to place is over here at the starting area. So we'll take care of that next time because that's the area we're going to be working on anyway. Before you go, please hit the like button if you enjoyed my video today and leave a comment to let me know. I'd love to hear what you think of my toy box layout and if you're building this on your own system or you plan to, let me know that too. 
If you want to see more Disney Infinity toy boxes in the future from me, please subscribe by clicking my photo in the lower right corner of this video or follow me on my blog. I also have playlists on my channel for other toy boxes that I've created, so be sure to check those out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.